You want a war? You're going to get one. Now get the gun, the drugs, from my generation, I'll take the fall, the saints, the cross of nations, and it's a Welcome to episode 95 of Reliving the War. This is a big one. WCW presents a special three-hour episode of Monday Nitro this week to celebrate their 100th broadcast on TNT. Lex Luger gets a shot at Hollywood Hogan's WCW Championship tonight in the main event. The WWF just wrapped up their pivotal SummerSlam 1997 pay-per-view and we've got a new WWF Champion. Bret Hart won the belt after Shawn Michaels accidentally hit The Undertaker with a steel chair. I know I say this a lot, but if you're following all this for the first time, you really need to check out the SummerSlam video I put up or just watch the whole pay-per-view yourself. You'll need to see what happened in order to fully grasp and appreciate where the WWF goes next. What we'll do this week is check out Nitro's first 60 minutes before flipping back and forth with head-to-heads. So get yourself comfortable and hopefully you enjoyed this week's episode of Reliving the War. Oh yeah, Road Wild 97 is on pay-per-view this week and I will cover that this Sunday on the channel. It's a very busy week here at Wrestling Bios Incorporated, so all I ask you is to hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. Alright, here we go. Michael Buffer welcomes us to Monday Nitro and the Nitro Guards perform a routine. Tony Schiavone's absolutely hyped up for this special episode of Nitro and gonna be honest, so am I. The show kicks off with an Eric Bischoff and Hollywood Hogan promo. The Hulkster says he's got the whole world watching Road Wild later in the week and Hulk planned on destroying Lex at that show, but Hollywood's gonna take out Luger in tonight's main event. Hogan says he'll successfully defend the championship later on, and at Road Wild, Hulk says Scott Hall will get the title shot. At the commentary desk, the commentators talk about Sting. JJ Dillon has an offer for Sting, a match contract, and he's gonna present it to the icon later in the show. Kurt Hennig then wrestled Mortis, bit of a strange pairing this one, but it was also good to see Mortis wrestle someone different. Don't worry, Frosty Balls will be in action later in the show. It ended with Perfect doing some damage to the knee before hitting the Perfect Plex. Is Kurt a good guy or is Kurt a bad guy? Is he NWO for life or did he get swayed by Horseman Business last week? Who knows? Hennig faces DDP this week at Road Wild. Next up, best friends forever, Dean Malenko and Double J took on Hector and Chavo Guerrero and Hector sang We Are Family when coming to the right. The audience chanted Jarrett sucks as Double J went to work on Hector and when Dean and Chavo got in the ring, the pace seriously picked up. Unfortunately, Chavo only stayed in very briefly. Hector couldn't tag out as Malenko and Jarrett actually worked quite well together. Hector ends up tapping out to the cloverleaf and after the match Double J wanted Dean Malenko to strut. Dean looked at him as if to say, I know you didn't sing with my baby tonight you dirty fraudster. Stevie Richards says the contract he presented Raven with wasn't up to par, so over the last 14 days Stevie's been in Atlanta Georgia meeting with JJ Dillon and Ted Turner to write up a new contract that would appease Raven. Raven has a look at it, he then stands up and he spits in Stevie's face. He pushes Stevie down and then Richards blocks a punch. Stevie says he won't let Raven push him around anymore and Raven just laughs before walking away. The Giant went back to his roots next by competing in a 3 on 1 match. We have Joey Mags, Lenny Lane and Scott Demore in there and yeah, total destruction. The best part was Giant running into all 3 guys in the corner. All 3 then took chokeslams and the Giant pins all of them to win the match. Randy Savage, the Giants upcoming opponent at Road Wild, he comes out and he says a Giant out of control is cool with him because the madness will be in control at the pay per view. Savage says the Giant doesn't want any of the macho man tonight and it ends with the Giant going after Randy and Randy makes a quick escape. The public enemy took on high voltage in the next matchup, Rocco Rock ended up going through the table when Kenny Chaos saved Robbie Rage, but this didn't stop public enemy from winning the match. Rage thanked Chaos by accidentally hitting him with a clothesline and this led to Grunge scoring a pinfall win. High voltage then put the broken table to good use and they attacked Johnny after the bell. 
The Nitro girls come out for another dance and Surprise motherfucker, the Nitro girls are gonna get us Wunderkind Bratwurst. It's time for Saturday Night Fever. Two. Oh, big Bratwurst. Alex Wright interrupting the Nitro Girls and showing them how it's done is probably better than Alex winning the Cruiserweight title last week. Alex begins speaking German and Mean Gene says, knock off the wiener schnitzel, absolute gold. Wright says if Chris Jericho wants embarrassed again, then Alex will face him at Road Wild. Alex says he's the greatest wrestler in WCW because he's Alex Wright and because he's German. Alex says the American population is stupid and he trips up a bit here when cutting the promo. Shivani says he'd rather hear Mean Gene talk German than Alex trying to talk English. Alex makes up for it though by destroying Scotty Riggs. He showed off his high flying skills with a one foot stomp from the top rope and he picked up the victory with a missile drop kick. Wright vs Jericho does indeed take place this week at Road Wild, so Alex will get a chance to swing his bravoers in front of some hairy biker dudes. That's the end of our number one. Nitro has a pay per view feel to it this week and so far the show has been good. Raw's gonna be very interesting this week after what happened in the IC and world title matches at SummerSlam. We waste no time at all, Raw opens up with a Heart Foundation promo, while Lex Luger cuts a promo on Nitro. We also have Six vs Chris Benoit. Jim Ross says the main event last night at SummerSlam was controversial. Bret Hart spat on Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart provoked Shawn Michaels, but the hitman can't keep the smile off his face. Bret says he proved last night that he's the best there is, the best there was and the best there ever will be, and he proved it against all odds. Bret says the WWF aren't holding up their end of the title match stipulation in regards to Shawn Michaels though. Bret says Shawn was biased, he favoured The Undertaker the whole way through the match, so Bret wants to know what the WWF are going to do about it. Jim Ross reveals that Bret faces the Patriot at the next In Your House show, Ground Zero, and the hitman says his loss against the Patriot on Raw last week was a fluke. Bret finds it funny that the Patriot stands for morals, yet he associates himself with guys like Shawn Michaels and that stinking lousy hyena Steve Austin. Bret then says he's proud of Davey, the Bulldog showed class in his match against Ken Shamrock and because of Ken's actions, the world's most dangerous man will never get another shot at the European belt. Davey looks absolutely wrecked from all those chin locks last night, seriously, he looks out of it. In regards to Brian Pillman wearing a dress tonight, Brett says it isn't gonna happen. Brett's the new sheriff in town and if the hitman says it ain't gonna happen, then it ain't gonna happen. Owen says he's angry with himself, he showed compassion during his IC title defence and he lost the championship. Owen says that's fine because Austin is now in hospital in New Jersey and the career of Steve Austin is over. Owen says he beat himself at SummerSlam, maybe not the best choice of words, and Austin should forfeit the title and hand it back to the King of Hearts if he doesn't want his ass kicked again. Jim Ross then introduces the new WWF commissioner, it's Sergeant Slaughter, and apparently this new commissioner has full power and full authority in the WWF. Slaughter says Bret isn't the sheriff, he is, and he says the first thing he's doing is booking Bret Hart in a match against the Patriot at Ground Zero. Yes, we already know that, Sarge. As for Davey, he's gonna face Shamrock again soon. Brian Pillman will wear the dress, and Owen's gonna get a chance to face Austin again when Austin recovers from injury. Steve Austin then appears, so he isn't in hospital, he's holding a neck brace, he says he doesn't need a doctor's approval, Owen was too stupid to cover Austin when he had the chance, and Austin says he's coming after Owen Hart tonight on Raw. Austin's eyes are really bloodshot here, he needed to be at home, but Austin said in documentaries that taking time off the road would have potentially killed his push. He may not be able to wrestle, but he's gonna show up where and when he can. Lex Luger says he was focused on Sturgis but opportunity knocks when you least expect it. Luger says there's defining moments in people's lives and people's careers and tonight will be a defining moment not just for Lex Luger but for WCW and the NWO. Luger heard Hogan earlier on, Lex says he'll give Hogan his due, Hulk did make pro wrestling what it is today but tonight the total package makes history. Hogan's gonna get put in the rack and Lex will become the new world heavyweight champion, he guarantees it. 
Six then comes out for a match with Chris Benoit and it starts off with Benoit in control. The two trade holds and Six thinks he has the advantage but a hook clothesline from Chris makes Waltman reconsider. Six hits his spinning back kick, Benoit performs a dragon screw and Chris then performs a dive through the ropes and the audience makes a lot of noise. Benoit finds himself in the tree of woe after Six stops an aerial attack and this leads to uh, yeah, an interesting bronco buster. Six then hits a Michinoku driver and he goes to the top rope but his somersault senton fails to hit its target. Waltman takes a few chops, he then takes a backdrop and a back suplex but Chris can't put Six away. Six then tries the bronco buster again but he misses. Benoit signals that this is the end but Jeff Jarrett runs down to attack Chris and the match ends in a disqualification. Steve McMichael runs down to help Chris, Dean Malenko then shows up and it's announced here that these two teams will face each other at Road Wild. The horsemen make easy work of the best friends forever and it's Mongo and Benoit who's left standing in the ring. Kenny Boy Shamrock vs Kama on Raw, Vincent vs Booker T on Nitro. We also have a quick DDP promo. Before the Raw match it's announced that Farouk vs Crush vs Savio Vega is gonna take place at Ground Zero and Farouk says the nation got involved in the SummerSlam match so they could show that they mean business. Nation business. Farouk says he'll whip Savio and crush his asses at Ground Zero and Ahmed says you can take the boy out of the hood but you can't take the hood out of the boy. Thanks for the inside Ahmed. Sergeant Slaughter's hell bent on bringing back law and order to the WWF so he sends the nation back to the locker room after Shamrock and Kama make their entrances. Remember Ken Shamrock wrecked officials and referees last night at the pay per view but I guess that's ok. Bit of a boring match here to be honest, there were a few timing issues between the competitors and to make it better the Bariquas showed up to suplex Kama on the outside. Kama got tossed back in the ring and Ken Shamrock won the match with a belly to belly suplex. After the bout Brockus cuts another promo and he says he's very proud of Alex Wright dancing with the Nitro girls, dreams are coming true for the Wright family. <laughs> Seriously, he mentions Triple H this time, he's been naming random factions and wrestlers during these promos. Over on TNT I had to double check but this is actually Vincent's first match on Monday Nitro, obviously biding his time with the intentions of putting on a barn burner on this very evening. He doesn't even last a minute, not with his nighttime accountant and not with Booker T in the ring. He gets in a few weak punches to start the match off but Booker quickly hits a scissors kick, he follows this up with a forearm to the face and then Stevie Ray gets in on the action. Vincent gets tossed back in the ring, we see the hardened sidekick and it's over. It's what we call an easy payday ladies and gentlemen. Stevie says this Saturday the same thing's gonna happen to Buff Bagwell and Scott Norton. Fucking brilliant match though Vincent, well done. Dallas Page comes out for an interview and Mean Gene announces a Dallas Page vs Ric Flair match tonight on Nitro. Gene talks about Kurt Hennig and Ric Flair's relationship and what it could mean for tonight's match and the Road Wild match pitting DDP against the former Mr Perfect. Dallas says he got where he is today by busting his ass and giving 120% every time he gets in the ring and another guy who's done that for the past 20 years is nature boy Ric Flair. Page thought he and Flair had a lot in common, their dislike for Hogan, their dislike for Randy Savage but if Ric Flair wants to court Kurt Hennig then that's something Page can't forgive. Dallas says Ric Flair may have his respect but DDP has Flair's number. Takamichi Noku takes on Brian Christopher next on Raw while the Barbarian battles Wrath on Nitro. Taka and Christopher without a doubt are the two best light heavyweights the WWF have presented and it's a real shame there's no one else around at the moment who can really hang with these guys in terms of offense. The great Suzuki is gone, Scott Taylor wouldn't break out until he tags with Christopher, Scott Putsky's available I guess but he won't be in a matter of weeks. Christopher lays in the punches and Taka goes down, Brian's awesome laugh echoes around the arena after Michinoku takes a clothesline and a northern light suplex. Brian mocks Taka as Michinoku tries to get to his feet. Some dude with an absolutely fantastic 80s perm shouts at Brian as Taka continues to take punishment but Brian remains unfazed and Taka goes down after a power bomb. Christopher goes flying out of the ring and Taka impresses with a springboard splash to the outside. Christopher makes Taka pay by smashing his little Michinoku driver on the top rope and Christopher then hits a backbreaker. He goes to the second rope, he hits Taka with a drop kick to the back of the head, he then goes for the three amigos but Taka catches Brian out and too sexy gets pinned. We see Big Perm again and he's laughing his ass off. Christopher attacks Taka after the bell while Jerry Lawler distracts the referee. Over on Nitro we've got a few big boys in the ring, Wrath and the Barbarian. 
Barbarian started off strong, but Wrath turned it around in a matter of seconds. A few strikes in the corner get followed up with a running clothesline and a side suplex. Wrath hits a diving clothesline from the top rope, and Barbarian gets a chance to fight back after countering a suplex with a suplex of his own. Barbarian does a little damage on the outside, and back in the ring, he hits a great looking power slam, but this isn't enough. Wrath catches the Barbarian, and we see the death penalty. Wrath wins via pinfall. Ming then comes out, the hard bastard he is, and we get a stare down. The crowd chant Haku as Vandenberg tells Wrath to back down. Wrath leaves the ring, and that was it. Sergeant Slaughter has a delivery for Brian Pillman, the dress he's gonna wear this evening, and Brian says he knows Slaughter gets his jollies by pushing his privates around the barracks, <laughs> but Sarge won't push Brian's privates on Raw. Pillman isn't wearing the dress, Sarge can go fuck himself. Slaughter says Pillman has to wear the dress until he wins a match on Raw, and if he refuses, Brian will be suspended. Pillman takes the dress, it looks like he has no other choice. Also, Owen Hart vs Steve Austin is being billed as a match that's gonna take place tonight on Raw. The WWF were nowhere near as bad as WCW when it came to bait and switches, but this is some bullshit right here. We have got Vader vs Triple H next on Raw, and on Nitro, the Steiner brothers cut a promo, can't wait for that. Vader vs Triple H did not get started last week thanks to Mick Foley attacking Hunter while dressed up as a cameraman, so we're gonna try again this week. Vince McMahon thinks this one will come down to the managers, and Paul Bear says before the match that his record speaks for itself. Paul also says he's more of a man than China will ever be. Vince was right, it did come down to the managers. It's almost like McMahon knows what's gonna happen in advance. Paul trips up Hunter on the outside and China decides to dropkick Bearer. The cameras didn't pick it up well, neither did the other camera during the replay. Hunter and Vader end up fighting on the outside and both guys get counted out. It's a very flat finish and the fans get treated to Vader trying to break the ring steps after the bout. Speaking of Vader, the big man's getting inducted in the Hall of Fame this year at WrestleMania, long overdue if you ask me. On Nitro, it's been rumoured that the Steiner brothers have an announcement that's gonna rock the NWO down to its stinking core. Ted DiBiase comes out with Rick and Scott, and it's only at this moment where I realised we haven't saw Ted in months. It was around Spring Stampede when we last saw him. A few different reasons have been given for Ted leaving the NWO. Reasons cited online include Ted becoming a minister and not wanting to be associated with the group. Sounds stupid, but it's out there. Another reason is that Ted didn't like how he was being used in the group. He said he didn't want to be Hulk Hogan's Virgil. And another reason given was the fact that Eric Bischoff took DiBiase's place as the mouthpiece of the NWO, meaning Ted really didn't have a role in the faction anymore. So he's now managing the Steiner brothers. DiBiase says he made a promise to live up to his dad's name and reputation, and that's something he achieved. But somewhere along the way, DiBiase lost track of what was important. Ted says he made some bad choices, but the buck stops here. Ted doesn't expect the Steiners to accept him on blind faith alone. DiBiase wants to prove himself, and he'll do that in Sturgis when he helps Rick and Scott rip the heart out of the NWO. He then slips up a little during the promo. Out of the NWO and taken. The world wrestling. You got your talk. <laughs> Close call there, million dollar man. The outsiders show up, and Scott Hall says the NWO have heard enough of the sob story. Scott says the Einsteiners are good, but the outsiders are better. The belts Hall and Nash wear proves that fact. Nash says the outsiders meant it when they said they were NWO for life. Clearly, DiBiase doesn't understand that, so Ted's a dead man if he wants to run around with Rick and Scott. Nash wraps it up by saying the only reason the Steiners brought on Ted DiBiase was so they had someone to read the menus while they were out on the road. Nice. So yeah, Ted DiBiase has left the NWO, and I'm just gonna be honest here, I didn't even notice he was gone. The Patriot vs The Sultan takes place on Raw next while two matches happen on Nitro, Psychosis vs Conan, and Ice Ice Maybe battled Silver King and Damian. The Patriot cuts a promo before the match and he says some of the things Brett says are true. There are some problems in America, but Brett doesn't do anything about it so The Patriot has made it his duty to try and fix the whole United States. Quick question, why would Brett want to try and fix America? That's your problem, Patriot. Patriot says Brett runs down America and he criticizes the system, yet he earns a living in the States and he provides for his family using the almighty dollar. So at ground zero, Patriot will take the WWF belt, he'll prove it wasn't a fluke last week on Raw, 
completely ignoring the fact that Shawn Michaels helped him out, but nonetheless, Patriot thinks he has a chance against the Hitman on pay-per-view, and I think old Dale Wilkes here should have been thankful he's getting a title shot on pay-per-view when there's a list of guys who were way more deserving at this point than what he was. Patriot goes to the ring to take on the Sultan, he gets the job done in around a minute and a half. Patriot said during his promo that the Sultan was undefeated and I was like, nah mate, that's wrong. But the Sultan actually hadn't got pinned or submitted up until this point on TV, it was always countouts or DQs. The Uncle Slam puts the Sultan away and after the match, Brett, Owen and Davey come out to teach this jabroni a lesson. Sergeant Slaughter sends Owen and Davey to the back and Brett doesn't notice. By the time the hitman realises he has no backup, he gets jumped by the Patriot. So much for morals. The two have a brief scuffle and it gets broken up by officials. Imagine if the Patriot wins the championship at Ground Zero though. Ooh. Conan's mission to take out every Mexican luchador continues with psychosis and Conan gets the job done. We see the rolling clothesline and we see the seated dropkick but psychosis isn't going down without a fight. Conan takes a hip toss and psychosis pulls off a nice wheel kick from the top rope. He then performs a springboard Arabian press but all this wasn't good enough. Cradle DDT, Tequila Sunrise and K-Dog gets another victory. Rey Mysterio then comes to the ring, Rey's gonna face Conan at Road Wild but he's still on crutches and it looks like he's nowhere near 100%. Rey gets in the ring, Conan kicks a crutch away and when K-Dog goes to pick the crutch up, Rey cracks him across the back. Mysterio's all healed up it seems and he's coming for Conan this week at the pay per view. Glacier and Ernest Miller then took on Silver King and Damien and it played out exactly how you'd imagine it. Silver King thought he'd done some damage to Glacier in the early portion of the match but Glacier can't be hurt, it's impossible. He's also way too smart to get caught out with amateurish underhanded tactics. After hitting a par slam, Ernest Miller comes in and he kicks people. That's what he does during this time in his career, you've seen it all before at this point, not that it isn't impressive or anything. It gets a bit ridiculous though when both Glacier and Miller take turns fighting their two opponents solo. Silver King and Damien look like they're absolutely no match for Glacier and his feline friend and it quickly turns into a squash match. Miller picks up the win with his top rope spin kick. I say it's time to feed these guys the heart and hate the outsiders or even the Steiners. We have promos next on both shows, Shawn Michaels is going to explain his actions at Summerslam while Eric Bischoff has a few things to say on Nitro. So HBK, this boy has some nerve showing up at Raw tonight after what he did at Summerslam. Shawn gets a mixed reaction, fans are booing, some are cheering, but clearly Shawn doesn't care. In regards to Summerslam, Shawn says it looks like Vince, Brett, The Undertaker and the fans of the World Wrestling Federation are dumping it on his lap. It's Shawn's problem, Shawn fucked up and Shawn needs to face the consequences. Shawn says it's typical for everyone not to take responsibility and it's typical that everyone wants to pass the buck on to him. But the thing is, Shawn doesn't care what anyone thinks of him. Shawn says he called the match down the middle and Vince agrees. He did make the three count after all. But then things go south and Vince gets pissed off with Michaels. Vince asks Sean if he's in cahoots with Brad Hart, as silly as it sounds, and Sean says Vince is the dumbest son of a bitch he's ever met in his life. Vince doesn't appreciate the comment and he lets Sean know. HBK makes fun of Vince, saying he's shaking in his loafers, and Vince says Sean has to face The Undertaker at Ground Zero before handing HBK the mic and telling Sean to finish the promo by himself. Right here, you can finish it. Yeah. Get your ass out of here! Michaels says he's not in cahoots with Bret Hart, but Bret Hart needs Shawn Michaels because HBK is the only man in the WWF who's kicked Bret's ass. Shawn says he and The Undertaker have never crossed paths, and he gets interrupted by fans chanting Michaels sucks. Shawn says he won't lie down for The Undertaker, he won't lie down for Bret or the fans. And again, the crowd boos Sean and it throws him off his game. HBK gets fired up, he says he's given fans 10 years and this is how they repay him. The fans can just go to hell and Michaels wraps it up by saying the next time The Undertaker sees him, it'll be Michaels foot down his throat. The Undertaker's music then plays and he makes his way down to the ring, prompting HBK to leave. 
McMahon interviews the champ and the Phenom says The Undertaker has been doing too much talking recently. It's time to take souls and make people rest in peace. HBK is gonna have to look at The Undertaker and Sean will have to pay for his crimes. And speaking of crimes, here comes Paul Bearer on the Titantron claiming the dead man murdered his little brother. Paul says he was with Kane last night and Paul has some important news for the dead man. Kane is, uh, he's coming. Yeah, he's coming. He's coming! He's coming! Yes, he is! So there you have it. Shawn Michaels has officially turned heel. It was desperately needed, by the way. And The Undertaker's little brother has promised to show up on WWF television. Eric Bischoff gets in the ring on Nitro and he says last week there was a total disregard for Law & Order by WCW, The Giant and Larry Sabisco. Remember Bischoff got chokeslammed by The Giant last week. Bischoff wants to address this so he calls out JJ Dillon. Dillon comes down and Bischoff tells Dillon to remind The Giant that he will get sued if he ever puts his hand on Bischoff again. As for Larry, if he ever lays a finger on Eric, Bischoff won't sue him. He'll take his left foot and kick Larry Sabisco right between the eyes. Dillon thinks this is hilarious and he says he's sure Larry heard him loud and clear. Bischoff repeats what he says, he threatens Larry and Dillon walks away laughing. So it looks like we may have a Bischoff vs Larry Sabisco feud coming up on WCW television. There was nothing else here unfortunately, the WWF promo meant a whole lot more on the grand scheme of things. Is everyone enjoying this week's episode of Reliving the War? We still have a few more matches to look at and we'll continue on with Ric Flair vs Diamond Dallas Page and Ahmed Johnson vs Chains. The Big Johnson is out for revenge. Chains caused Ahmed to miss a few weeks of ring action so it's time for a little payback. Before the match we see Sergeant Slaughter talking to a doctor and the doc says Austin should not wrestle tonight, he's too hurt. McMahon says this won't stop Stone Cold so we'll see what happens a little later on. Slaughter then comes down to ringside and he tells the nation and the dirty old assholes to leave. This is gonna be a one on one match, thank god. Chains gets pushed around a bit so he decides to go straight for the leg. He thinks he has it all under control until he smashes his little disciple of apocalypse on the middle rope. And remember how I said last week that no one really noticed Ahmed pulling off a Michinoku driver? Well, he performs two Michinoku drivers this week. Poor Taka was probably crying in the back. The Barikwas come out and they threaten to steal Chains' bike. And this distraction leads to Ahmed hitting the Pearl River Plunge. Johnson wins the match and the DOA come out afterwards to stop those pesky Barikwas. But then, of course, a big fight breaks out and the nation reappears to get involved. Confusion then ensues when the nation begin attacking Ahmed Johnson and this just didn't make any sense at all. I thought Ahmed was more suited for the nation at this point in his career but it looks like he's out of the faction. D'Lo ends the beating with an elbow drop from the top rope and how the WWF expected Ahmed to recover from this kind of booking is absolutely beyond me. Dallas Page vs Ric Flair then. Flair goes down after a shoulder block and he pushes Dallas afterwards. DDP smacks Flair across the face and the nature boy doesn't seem all that bothered. Rick tries to bring it to the corner with a few chops but Dallas watches reliving the war, he knows what's coming. So he's able to counter Rick and the nature boy ends up taking a back body drop. Flair's demeanor has now totally changed as he begs Page to back off. DDP shows Rick that respect he talked about earlier, the fans chant DDP's name and Flair gets back to his feet. The commentators talk about the contract Sting will get presented with later in the show and Bobby Heenan says we don't want to miss this. Even if your house is on fire, don't take your eyes off the TV. Dallas sits a sit down powerbomb and just before we go to commercial break, Kurt Hennig shows up. We come back and the nature boy has taken control. Pisses me off sometimes when we miss exactly what happened during commercial breaks but anyway, Dallas fights back and we see a glorious flare flop. Dallas gets too confident and he takes a back elbow but Ric Flair makes the common Ric Flair mistake by going to the top rope. Dallas then hits a spinning neck breaker, he's all fired up but Kurt Hennig jumps on the apron to cause a distraction. Flair takes advantage, we see the chop lock, we see another hard knife edge chop, we see the knee drop. Flair thinks he's got it in the bag but Page fires back with a clothesline. It's not enough, Flair locks in the figure 4 but Dallas makes it to the ropes, Rick makes the most of the 5 count. Flair tries to suplex Dallas out of the ring but Page counters and Dallas locks in a figure 4 of his own. The ref gets poked in the eye by Rick, Kurt runs in and the crowd pops when Dallas rolls Kurt up while still applying the figure 4. 
Paige sends Rick to the corner. We see the corner bump. Flair tries to jump off the top rope afterwards, but Dallas catches Rick with a clothesline. Dallas then hits the pancake, and that's when Kurt Hennig jumps in the ring. Mark Curtis calls for the bell, but Dallas is doing just fine here. He picks up those brass knucks that don't look like brass knucks, but we'll call them brass knucks anyway, and he gives them to Curtis. Paige manages to clean house, and both Rick and Hennig get taken out. The crowd absolutely loves it. And the match ends with Dallas celebrating while Flair and Hennig wonder where it all went wrong. Good TV match here, the best of the night so far. Gonna quickly breeze over these next two matches, Tag Team Warfare on both shows, The Godwins vs The Headbangers on Raw, and we've got Liz Mark Jr and Hector Garza vs Los Pianos on Nitro. Was kinda expecting the Road Warriors to show up during the Raw Tag Team match, but no, there's no interference here. It's not a bad Tag Team match either, and I like the finish. Mosh had Phineas covered, but Henry came in and hit a slop drop. Phineas then successfully pinned Mosh to win the bout. On Nitro, I couldn't care less who wins. I just want to know if Hector or Hector managed to successfully pull off his top rope corkscrew dive to the outside, and yeah, he did. Granted, he had a way bigger target this week, but by god, he pulled it off. This springboard head scissors also looked awesome, but the crowd stayed silent. Unfortunately, this wasn't enough to secure the victory. The Vianos pulled off the old switcheroo, the oldest trick in the book, and Liz Mark Jr. ended up taking the loss. I'm kinda surprised that a match like this would be put on so late in this 3 hour episode of Nitro. Right, here we go. JJ Dillon wants to bring Sting back to in ring action next on Nitro while Brian Pullman faces Bob Holly on Raw. Pillman had no other choice and not even later Bret Hart could save him from having to wear Marlena's dress on Raw. Even Goldust and Marlena showed up to see how good Bran Pillman would look. The crowd pops when Slaughter throws Bran out the curtain and Bran doesn't look too happy at all. He tries to take it out on Sparky Plug and check it out, he's doing really well. The dress even absorbs Holly's kicks so this could be a good thing for the loose cannon. Pillman is pretty vicious here. The whole arena chanting a slur seems to knock Brian off his game plan though, and someone must have pissed Holly off because he almost takes Brian's head off with a clothesline. Bob then starts having a little fun at Brian's expense, and you can hear Vince saying no 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 on commentary. The crowd is really into this one though, and so is Goldust and Marlena. Pillman takes a power slam, and then Bob misses a top rope leg drop by a fucking mile. Marlena taunts Pillman from her front row seat, so Brian goes out to confront her. He forgot he was in a wrestling match though, and he gets counted out meaning he has to wear the dress again next week. This probably wouldn't go down well today and I'm sure someone would get up in arms about it, but as you can see, it worked really well in 1997. It also looked like Bran was going all in with it, so yeah, there you have it. But let's get serious over on Nitro. JJ Dillon is in the ring with me and Gene Okerlund, and he's got some papers in his hand. Someone has a great sign in the crowd by the way. Hey Vince, use the one million to sign some talent. <laughs> Someone also has a JWO sign, Jabroni World Order. Mean Gene says the rumours have been crazy recently, no matter where Mean Gene goes, all he hears about is Sting. JJ says nobody has spoken to Sting in a year, there were a lot of people who questioned Sting's loyalties and there was a tremendous amount of distrust. Dylan says he sympathises with Sting, everyone got him wrong, and Sting shown that he's 100% WCW thanks to his actions over this past year. The problem Dylan has is the fact he doesn't know what Sting wants, he's tried to talk to him, he's tried to find him tonight, Dylan wants Sting to show up and just give him a chance. JJ has a match contract he wants Sting to sign, it's time for Sting to come back to in ring action. The Stinger shows up, he makes his way down to the ring, and JJ now has a chance to sign a Sting match. JJ says WCW needs Sting back in the ring, WCW want to rebuild trust, and this contract could be the beginning. Dylan proposes a Sting vs Kurt Hennig match. He hands over the contract, and Sting rips it up. Sting then leaves the ring, Dylan tries to bring him back but Sting doesn't want to sign. He walks away, Mean Gene says WCW and the fans need the icon, and JJ says he won't give up, he'll do what he needs to do to get the stinger in a match. The fans are disappointed but JJ's gonna try again, quite a few times actually. 
The Raw main event has been changed. We have got Dude Love versus Owen Hart now on Raw, while on Nitro, Lex Luger challenges Hulk Hogan for the heavyweight title. Vince McMahon's giving Brett a hard time. Brett came down to commentate and Vince doesn't want him there. Brett says everyone else is allowed to do it, so why isn't he? It's a fair point. Dude Love has some groupies sitting at ringside. I hope this paid well. Brett says Foley is too interested in the ladies when he should be focusing on the match. Owen lays it in early, but Dude Love comes back with a face crusher. Foley then hits a clothesline, and check out his top rope move right here. <laughs> That's fantastic. Owen replies to this insanity with a spinning wheel kick as Steve Austin watches the match backstage. Owen then gets backdropped over the top rope, and Dude Love does a little damage right in front of Brett. It looks like Brett isn't too impressed. Back in the ring, Dude Love tries to separate Owen's shoulder. A rake to the eyes gives Owen a bit of hope, but Dude Love's in top form tonight. He delivers a few karate chops in the corner, and Brett can't believe what he's seeing, and he can't believe fans are actually enjoying this. Dude Love applies a chin lock, Owen goes down after a hip toss, and Vince McMahon wants to know why the King and Brett Hart are all buddy buddy now after all the things Jerry said about Brett and the Hart family. Gotta admit, it is weird hearing Brett laughing at Lawler's jokes. We go to commercial break after Dude Love gets thrown out of the ring and when we come back Foley misses an elbow drop, an elbow drop that he took quite some time to set up. Owen hits a top rope drop kick back inside the ring, Mick takes a suplex followed by some mounted punches, and an enziguri knocks Foley out of the ring once again. Davy Boy Smith shows up as Owen performs an elbow drop in the ring but Slaughter sends Davy back to the locker room. While this happens Foley again ends up on the outside and Brett rams Mick into the ring post. The hitman throws Foley back in the ring and Owen applies the sharpshooter. Steve Austin then appears, he grabs a Slammy award at the commentary table, and officials have to come down to stop Brett and Austin fighting with each other. In the middle of the chaos, Austin hits Owen with the Slammy, and Dude Love ends up winning via pinfall. Austin heads back up the ramp, looking very pissed off. Brett checks on Owen, Dude Love gets jumped by those groupies, and he gets properly jumped by the way. Look at the fun Mrs. Foley's baby boy's having right now and Raw fades to black. Solid main event this week from Raw's War. It isn't talked about much, so check it out if you have the time. Michael Buffer comes back out to introduce Lex Luger and Hollywood Hogan. Hogan comes out with no NWO backup, but we know the whole squad is here on Nitro. NWO run-ins are common, this match is booked for the Saturday pay-per-view, so nobody really expects Luger to win here. The two circle the ring, they lock up and Hogan applies a hammerlock. Luger quickly counters it and Hogan gets to the ropes. Luger then pushes Hogan after another lock up and there's the crab pose. Hulk gets up, he brings Luger to the corner and he gives him a shove as the crowd chants Hogan sucks. Hulk then brings Lex to the corner and he lays it in. The fans quickly change their minds about Hulk and they cheer Hollywood afterwards. I think they're just excited to see this match on Nitro. Hulk hits a clothesline, he drops a few elbows, he rubs his boot on Luger's face, and things don't look too good for the total package. Hulk hits a body slam and he chokes Lex on the mat. It looks like Hulk's having fun as he rams Luger's head into the top turnbuckle, but the crowd pops when Luger turns it around. It's now Lex's turn to do some damage in the corner, but Luger gets poked in the eye and we go to commercial break. We come back and Lex is in a bear hug. He gets out with a headbutt, so Hogan lands a headbutt of his own. Mike Tanay says Hogan hit Luger with a chair during the break, but we don't see a replay of it. Instead, we see Lex taking a suplex, but it isn't enough to end the match. Hogan hits a side suplex. He thought he got the three count afterwards, but Luger got a foot on the ropes. And then Hogan has fun with Luger, punching and chopping the total package while talking to the camera. Hulk calls Luger a Hollywood wannabe as Lex gets throttled in the corner. Hogan then hits the big boot, but it's only a two count. And there it is, the leg drop. Hogan covers Lex. One, two, kick out of three. Hulk can't believe it and neither can the crowd. Hulk misses a second leg drop and just as Lex was about to fire up, the outsiders and macho man Randy Savage show up. Lex manages to take care of the NWO, and you can see and hear the audience's excitement when they realize the typical DQ finish might not happen tonight. Lex signals for the wreck, he gets Hulk up, the roof comes off the arena, and then it happens. Lex, 
There's a big old celebration to end Nitro, the WCW roster hit the ring, officials, referees, Alex Wright, Glacier, everyone wants to join Luger, Luger just won the WCW championship and what a moment in Nitro history this was. The NWO has been hurt big time, the title is now with WCW and in the midst of this big party that's happening in the ring, reality hits you and you gotta wonder what this means for the Road Wild pay per view later in the week. Old Giant gets a 1-2 on the way back up the ramp, he gets chinned with the belt and he gets a drink thrown over him but nothing's gonna kill the mood tonight. We go to the commentary team who talk about how this is the first time WCW has been in the lead since the NWO came along, we then go backstage where the champagne flows and the NWO spray paint gets removed from the word title. And then we see Hogan losing his mind in the NWO locker room. Hogan says this wasn't supposed to happen, he flips a few tables, but he also says he wants the NWO to watch his back at Sturgis. This confirms that Luger vs Hogan is gonna happen again at the pay per view, and you know what that means. Nitro wins reliving the war this week and I don't think I need to explain why. Raw was good too, the HBK promo and the main event stood out for sure, but WCW put on an excellent special episode of Nitro this week and it was a pleasure to sit through this one. Not gonna lie, sometimes it can be a slog getting through these episodes week by week and I knew this video was gonna be a long one but I had a blast putting this together. If only these kind of shows could happen every week. Nitro leads with 43 points, Raw has 40 and we're still on 12 ties. Nitro racked up an impressive 4.4 TV rating this week while Raw got a 2.7. This is the highest rating Nitro has received so far and that includes nights when they went unopposed. Road Wild 1997 will be available on the channel later in the week as usual, so hopefully you come back and check out the pay per view. On Raw we have Hawk vs Henry Godwin in a country whipping match, bet you forgot that happened. We have got Owen and Davy Boy in tag team action, and Shawn Michaels has a security policy in place for his main event match against Mankind. Thank you for watching Reliving the War, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and take care. <laughs>